the coronavirus pandemic has been with india for a while while india struggles on the health and economy aspects there is one particular area where the lockdown seems to have helped and that is in cleaning up the air india had very high levels of air pollution and now the levels of air pollution have come down we are back to seeing blue skies i have with me dr gopran beg he is the head of the indian research system which monitors the air pollution almost all over india and he is a scientist at the indian institute of tropical meteorology in pune and considered the man who can give or not give clean air to india dr beg what did we learn from this lockdown especially on air pollution thank you very much pallav ji uh, in fact uh, as i as you already mentioned that uh, uh, from the horror there is one silver lining and that silver lining is something that uh, due to the lockdown uh, of the covid 19 the emissions of all major pollutants uh, whatever you think of has uh, almost come to stand still are close to zero now obviously this is a practical proof uh, that how emissions can control the air quality which you breathe uh, and that is the reason that there is a lot of problems that you know lot of people suffer from the respiratory system disease either you call it a copd or anything of that kind so this is the first thing that which has practically proved now that when the emissions goes down air quality goes significantly go down now uh, so that is one of the important things initially when there was a first uh, lockdown and initial uh, a week uh, air quality uh, the air pollutants has drastically reduced and then in different cities uh, right from delhi is the highest uh, mumbai is the second one so sometime it is 70% of pm 2.5 sometime 80% of no2 and all those so it is a varying differences in a different cities there are two questions which comes in mind to the people which they keep asking me number one when all the emission sources has come to zero why the pollution has not become zero yes. number one number one number second is when everywhere there is a lockdown everywhere emission sources has gone to almost zero why here 70% why it is 40% why it is uh, 35% in that connection i would like to mention two things important mm -hmm. there is a terminology what we call is a baseline level Correct. or background level or in other words basically in a scientific terminology it is called permanent levels correct which nature has given us in addition to anthropogenic sources we talk about there is another source of pollutants which normally remains constant we do not talk much about it but in a model our forecasting in suffer forecasting and many other all over the world people take that as a natural emissions mm -hmm. there are emissions which is coming from the soil there are emissions from the natural nature which has been given which varies from city to city and in addition to that nature has given us uh, a particular combination of any chemical compound for example oxygen has to be 21% it is 21% we want to make it 15% today it cannot be 15% if you want to make it 40% today it cannot be so that is the reason that there is a fixed amount in the atmosphere due to the environment which god has given us correct is called a permanent or baseline level so beyond which whatever you do it it will not go down so that was the answer to a question where people say that when the pollution has gone the emissions has gone ze almost zero why pollution has not gone to so it has stagnant as baseline or permanent level correct number 1 number 1 number 2 due to anthropogenic activities different cities not only because of the anthropogenic activity but because of the geographical location because of the vulnerability of the weather at a particular city for example delhi is a land lock city weather affects a lot whatever things get in very difficult to get out of that place 
so that is the reason that due to this uh, sometimes the same anthropogenic activities give rise to huge amount of pollution and that air quality becomes very poor or severe at that at the same kind of emissions if it is there some other places and there is a ventilation then the air quality is different and that is one of the reasons uh, that for example if you talk about ahmedabad and delhi delhi pollution is uh, uh, you know a category higher it is in a red category what we call is a very poor or poor in this uh, in this season normal in ahmedabad it remains in moderate to poor pune it remains between satisfactory to moderate mumbai it remains around poor to very poor so it all remain on that now when you are reducing something it will reduce from that level which was there already correct so and it has to stop at baseline level and another very interesting thing which you would like to know that each city do not have a same baseline level mm -hmm. for example one of the most important discovery which we have found is that delhi has the least background level mm -hmm. among for example well i am talking about six cities delhi mumbai pune ahmedabad calcutta and uh, uh, chennai in this city when we try to find it out delhi is the least best ground level so it will go to that particular level that is why it will look like that percentage reduction is maximum in delhi percent reduction is maximum in mumbai but not that high as in pune because pune is very close to the baseline level already did you did you know these baseline figures or the lockdown has given you these baseline or permanent figures yes so this was one of the what you call is a unique opportunity or what we call is a as i told you that it is a gold line in a uh, pandemic in a disaster is something which would never have achieved because we cannot bring down to the pollutant is close to the zero level uh, i mean emissions close to the zero level and right. that is the reason that in all those cities uh, that baseline level has been determined by the suffer scientist and that is available specifically for six cities four suffer cities and in addition to that we took the data and we are having a map on another network of station in delhi in chennai and uh, calcutta so mumbai Ch Mum mumbai delhi pune ahmedabad chennai and calcutta we could find out the baseline level here i would like to men mention here that the baseline level of pm 2.5 at mumbai is highest that is something like around pm 2.5 is 35 microgram per meter cube mm -hmm. whereas in delhi you will find it is around 25 microgram per meter cube mm -hmm. so you know the point is that so the same time you would like to know that delhi the pollution remains much higher than mumbai but the baseline level is lower as compared to mumbai and well i will come to further that when we try to correlate the mortality and morbidity due to covid 19 it is not having showing much correlation with annual particulate matter or it is in a prevailing whatever the pollutants are there it has a huge correlation more than 80% correlation with baseline level and mm -hmm. that is the, that is the level where you are chronically exposed all the time where you are in the bedroom where you are outside where you are anywhere any part of the city so you you're suggesting that there is more mortality in areas where the baseline pollution level is higher exactly that is what is the relationship which we found that for example mumbai the baseline level is the highest okay second out of i am talking about out of these six cities yes 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 Mo, uh, mumbai pm 2.5 base level is highest number 2 comes ahmedabad number 3 comes pune pune in general considered to be the cleanest among all those mm -hmm. and air quality remains in satisfactory and moderate at this reason and then fourth number comes delhi and then after that there is chennai chennai is anyway the cleanest uh, are the lowest baseline levels uh, uh, talking about baseline levels have now that we understand what the baseline levels are now that we understand what the baseline levels are dr beg do you think it is time to recalibrate what is green what is orange what is red 
and what is satisfactory, what is poor? Exactly. This is a very pertinent question. So far, based on the uh, whatever association we used to get it with the air pollution and health related data, which is very uh, sparse in our country relationship and the study on this particular thing, we were trying to just uh, work out our best uh, with the theoretical knowledge uh, to find out the standards. But now since we know that when you can bring down to the emissions to this level, the baseline cannot go beyond that. Yes. Now, now that is something which is an ideal case. Correct. Obviously, with the economic activities which has to go on, there is no second thought on that. So economic Correct. activity, vice versa, the pollution control, both that thing has to go together for country to progress. Correct. There is no second thought in that. So there is a level you need to find it out that there are activities which has to go for the economy. So that level and the baseline level, if you make both the together, I think there is a strong need now to revise the standards because our standards in India, what we find is very stringent, specifically the uh, the uh, what you call is a um, uh, the the darker green, what we call is a green uh, good air good air quality index. Yeah. Yeah. And even then, you know, the point is now it is very clear proved. Even then, there are many scientists, are many people they keep telling that our standards are very high as compared to Europe or mm -hmm. America or any other thing. But now it is very clear that our standards are not really very high. In fact, it has to go even higher than what it is. But that needs to be worked out. Meaning, meaning, if I put it in layman's terms, the time has come for us to raise the bar and say this much baseline level pollution is already there and so much more can be permitted. So this exactly. clamor which we have that you keep it low, keep it low, get the industry to install more pollution control measures. Now, will there be some kind of leniency on that because the standards will have to change? I feel now since we know experimentally the baseline level and then as you rightly said that we need to put that permit. See, the baseline level normally as I understand with the clinical uh, literature that this is what is the level for which you are immune to. Correct. So our body, God has given something particular uh, thing to us and then God has made us immune to that particular thing, whether you call it a poison or you call it a air pollution. Now that is particular thing. And then after that, your immune system being in this climate, being in this country, being in this kind of a system, what we have, remain, you know, it is there, the, the, uh, your immune system uh, can take... Uh, something where your body may not react that much. And that is where we have a window where we should put a relaxing of those which is directly proportional to the economic activities and whatever the things required for boosting our country's economy. So, so do you have a percentage figure in mind by which the relaxation should happen? Uh, well, I... From permissible limits, obviously. Yeah, yeah, permissible limit. Uh, but then, you know, it is a it is a very first time that uh, this has come out with this. Uh, yes. Now, the the difference between a permissible limit and the baseline level, mm -hmm. this is something which uh, you know policymakers need to decide based on the input or feedback from people like us. Uh, who can uh, provide that particular thing and uh, after that there is a need of uh, basically the clinical research uh, where one has to find it out that uh, what is the level where the impact uh, of uh, that particular level will be almost negligible or uh, almost nil um, uh, so that you know we can uh, raise those, those levels. So what is the difference between the permissible level and the baseline level? Is it many times more, the baseline level, more than the permissible? How close is it or how far is it from between the two? At this moment of time, what is roughly, well, it varies, baseline varies from pollutant to pollutant. For example, <coughs> NO2 is different, PM2.5 is different and all this way. But as uh, far as a rough study, which I could compare, looks like uh, 
that baseline levels are very close to uh, close to our permissible limit and sometimes baseline levels are slightly higher than the permissible limit but this is something which we are talking about zero emission scenario correct so which which is which is almost impossible to achieve it in a real life so so if that is the case you are talking about an extreme case yes yes so i think uh, that particular uh, i have given you an idea that what exactly the comparison comparison between a baseline at this at this moment baseline and this are comparable no, see it it has deep implication of what what you are saying has deep implication on the economic activity of the country because today industry is forced to adopt certain standards which seemed unreachable in a way right. if they cannot go below the baseline level exactly. and if you are forcing them to go there then we are asking would you agree for an impossible and we need to recalibrate all of this in very quickly uh, well this need to be worked out that part, that's what i am talking about this need to be worked out and there are two issues in that number one is uh, that uh, you allow raise a level of permissible limit based on the baseline what we got it number one and second thing is there are measures by which certainly you can increase your production mm -hmm. but then the uh, emission could be as low as possible so both the things has to be worked out in a tandem so so you think this whole aqi index ne aqi needs to be recalibrated well uh, in the light of uh, the the baseline which we get it we need to have a deliberation and then after that i think uh, policy maker scientists uh, work together and work out but here you know one thing is again important whatever this baseline level we got it one thing is very which uh, nobody is in fact uh, must have thought about it is one source uh, has not declined at all in fact uh -huh. initially that particular source of emission has increased a bit as per our survey emission inventory survey and what is that level is a biofuel okay residential cooking okay and in our country more than 60 70% population resides in a uh, rural areas and still many of them uses the wood or coal for the cooking correct so when people are at home the biofuel emissions uh, have increased people correct. feel more hungry or maybe more at that home they are uh, fuel is they are specifically when you talk about a uh, slums and other places where people are still using the you know um, uh, the wood and coal but at the same time it got compensated that incremental increase with the kind of a fuel which is street vendors uh, or the hotel use whether it is lpg gas or something but some amount of emissions in any way coming from biofuel also so that particular thing yeah uh, talking about biofuels and and this what is the new understanding you have on apportionment of pollution thanks to this lockdown yes exactly see one thing we you know that as a national wise we developed the emission inventory with right. the highest resolution and daily we have just completed last year with 400 meter by 400 meter resolution for all the pollutants we talk about pm10 pm2.5 nox co benzene toluene xylene volatile organic compounds so2 black carbon organic carbon all those we did it with 400 meter by 400 resolution obviously they are based on the whatever the emission factors available and whatever the activity data with the exercise for last couple of months during that time involving volunteer we could collect it and whatever the data available with our different ministries and government organization related with the activity data now but basically they are all theoretical study yeah. again again what you talk about the emission factors are the one which has been measured emission factors may differ from 10 years old vehicle 5 year old vehicle 2 years right. old vehicle new thing when we talk about uh, bharat stage 4 5 6 we talk about the new vehicle Correct. but the, the age of the vehicle and it is not maintained properly the emission factors goes drastically gone so there are somewhere we could find a chance to correct our emission inventory in some of the factors okay where we could learn that 
or a this is the thing where the biofuel emissions has a huge role to play which we undermined correct for example carbon monoxide mm -hmm. carbon monoxide so far we were thinking specifically uh, in a city like uh, other than delhi delhi by the way biofuel emission within the city is extremely low okay because majority of the people have you started using 96% of the people in the slums are now using the lpg correct but there are some places where you know the usage is not that uh, kind of thing for example when we talk about uh, even mumbai the biofuel emission contribution is huge mm -hmm. so as far as when we talk about no2 or pm 2.5 pm 10 contribution of biofuel emissions are not that much okay so whatever the whatever the baseline level we got it uh, error due to biofuel emissions contribution in that is minimized okay. but still i cannot rule out uh, the contribution that should be some 5 to 10% contribution will always be there for that whatever this but uh, carbon monoxide mm -hmm. we found that uh, the kind of a Although the total emissions which we con which we calculated from all 23, 27 sources mm -hmm. remains the same. Mm -hmm. But we have underestimated the contribution of biofuel and overestimated contribution of the transport sector okay. in carbon monoxide. Okay. Okay. For example, I will tell you in, in a city like Mumbai. Yeah. We have told that uh, the contribution from the transport sector is in CO is about 60%. Okay. And biofuel is something like around 20-25%. But it has reversed. Okay. This is the resultant we got it from our suffer forecasting model. Okay. We try to do the sensitivity study. Okay. Okay. But any, any indications on apportionment to say regular pollution versus industry pollution versus say crop waste burning any 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 indications from this lockdown towards that or because all of them came down you don't have an idea on that no no see in a when we do in a chemical forecasting model which uh, we have a distinction as a suffer is the first air quality forecasting model where we define the pollutants emission as per the sources Correct. Now, when you switch off uh, five sources out of six, uh, then you will have an impact of one source. Correct. Similarly, you keep on telling the, you know, the um, relative contribution of the each sources. Correct. But uh, that is based on an assumption where baseline level you have made it something which was theoretical. Ah, ah, ah. Now, since you know the experimentally the background level, your model predictions are finding out the contribution for e sources are going to be much accurate correct so so you, you the lockdown has given you enough material to understand pollution than you ever got ever before in fact lockdown has given us say not only the enough material but uh, uh, improved our fundamental understanding about the uh, pollutant sources and pollutant emissions but now the lockdown is slowly and steadily being eased. In Delhi, at least, the blue skies are not as blue as they should be. How long will this last, sir? Uh, well, what we were thinking that uh, because of the lockdown, emissions has gone down. When it is going to be eased out, I think monsoon will come immediately, should come. <laughs> and then at least we can have a this kind of a low level of uh, air quality for let us say another couple of months so continuously for about uh, five six months we could have it but uh, obviously when i saw that after now uh, 20 uh, 17th or 18th of uh, may uh, level of specifically no2 where the 70 to 80 percent contribution are from the transport sector started slight uh, increasing mm -hmm. but you know one thing is for sure that uh, with this, it is not that one day when you put a emission zero, then building up the emissions to a level, you know, filling up the volume takes in few few hours. 
Okay. Let us say. Okay. But now, since uh, we have a lockdown and we have no emission for almost more than a two months, uh, then we have cleaned up purely not only near the surface but whole troposphere. Okay. Okay. And troposphere, in fact, not only we are talking about a smaller particle when we talk about particulate matter, but uh, even bigger aerosols also. Mm -hmm. And aerosol, as you know, that they are the one where the reflecting type of aerosols are there, Correct. other than black carbon. Correct. It uh, acts as a solar dimming. Correct. So it opposes uh, the global warming due to climate Correct. change. Correct. Now, that particular dimming effect is not there. Correct. Is that why we are seeing a hotter summer in North India? Temperatures running to 46, 47 degrees already in, in late May. They should be higher much later. This could be one of the reasons uh, when we have not yet studied the total solar radiant, uh, how the flux uh, levels have increased. But we have in all these sub four suffer cities, uh, the UV index calculation, mm -hmm. UV mm -hmm. flux. And that is for sure has increased the moment uh, the after two, three days after the lockdown, when atmosphere started clearing, it has increased significantly in a cities like Ahmedabad and Delhi and Pune. But uh, obviously, because of the high humidity in a coastal areas like Mumbai or Chennai, the reduction is relatively less. But obviously, so when the UV radiation have increased, uh, and that increase is uh, significant. As if you compare it as compared to 2019 of the same time, the increase uh, right from 15 to about 55% uh, in the UV flux. So if, how soon after the lockdown do you expect levels to reach severe, very severe 500 again? Because in Delhi where I am, we constantly yeah. learn to live with levels which are mm. unimaginable. And there is a picture of India Gate where you see one side dirty, dirty air and one side clean air. Mm -hmm. when, when does the clean air become dirty air? Well, normally, as you know, that uh, during the monsoon, pollutions get washed yes. off. Yes. In Delhi, in in a in summer, when the boundary layer, what we call is the inversion layer, which is the upper lid of our atmosphere surface, it remains very high due to the temperature. Correct. So pollution normally remains relatively lower. Yes. So the lowest monsoon, second, then next is summer, and in winter, as you all know, the temperature is cooler, so boundary layer comes down, weather becomes very hostile in terms of air pollution. Yeah, yeah. when trapping winds become slower correct, and correct. due to this uh, the uh, pollution is really getting trapped correct. so uh, i am very confident until about uh, monsoon seasons let us say about uh, um, september or so but uh, when the winter comes uh, and the normal life continues uh, and uh, there is a possibility that those uh, establishments uh, which have gone into the loss due to the lockdown, they might try to make up their productions much uh, above the, their normal capacity. So the activity might uh, increase. And uh, that is something which is little, what you call is a worrisome. But, uh, the, you know, the kind of a vacuum which has been created of the emissions uh, due to this lockdown, it is certainly not going to be filled within a few days or few weeks. Mm -hmm. So the impact of this, uh, certainly we are going to see uh, the, you know, you know, we are going to um, have a good fruits uh, of this lockdowns uh, uh, vacuum cleaned up atmosphere, at least for a couple of weeks uh, before it goes to the uh, business as usual scenario. Now, now see, a lot of people had learned to live with pollution. Right. Now people have tasted clean air. Right. Only the younger generation, which have been now teenagers who have in Delhi, they last saw clean blue skies say in 2000. Now, 
would it be easier for scientists like you to impress on policy makers to make sure that we have green and clean manufacturing in fact that is something very pertaining question which i was all the time facing and now the people when i am interacting specifically to youngsters and the young they used to say no i don't think that pollution goes high because of this i think nature has given us like that and so many other things how do you show sure whether you measured it uh, when it will make it zero do you think that pollution will decline then there are a lot of debate this source versus that source it is giving more it is giving high but now i think people have seen that when emission goes down what happens yes and they have witnessed it with their own eyes and right. i think this with the kind of a uh, kind of a people citizens we are having in our country we are very understandable by looking at the evidences i think i i call is one term all is a self mitigation yes that self mitigation thinking our own that when emission goes down how we are we got benefited due to that and how the visits of the people who are suffering acutely because of the asthma or something has gone down which i got a report from uh, different hospitals uh, that the visits of those patients which used to be very acute asthmatic and respiratory system related diseases connected with air quality has reduced significantly yeah 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 this is the reports which i read it in many thing all those so those reports are also being done and house obviously the very first thing what you call is the the one we, for which you are attributing to that and that is what is so all this practical evidence experimental based uh, evidences are there with all of them so i think the belief uh, in general towards uh, cleaning and self mitigation and our job to convince them with this evidences has gone strengthened many fold uh, always a pleasure speaking to you dr beg uh, you got a once in a lifetime or once in a historical opportunity to measure baseline loads of air pollution when humans were around but the polluting sources like vehicular activity and industrial activity was very low uh, your findings will have deep uh, impact both on economic activity how it is channeled in times to come and also in citizens demanding a clean blue clean air i think it i think your contributions will go a long way i wish the suffer team the very best and india is fortunate to have had this very unique system which could give us empirical practical and very evidential data which we were lacking so that we can do better pollution control measures in times to come Uh, what a pleasure speaking to you dr beg thank you before thank i close you. i think uh, i would like to uh, one very yes. very uh, uh, complicated question i would like to answer that particular thing which i think we have not touched it we should go Dur ahead. during this lockdown sometime you must have seen in delhi there was a spike yes pm10 which has gone down to about 25 30 microgram 30 microgram per meter cube has suddenly gone to 120 microgram per meter right. cube right right now people were number of people in fact uh, and then number of uh, uh, officials called me also they said well this lockdown is not working what has happened to that again it has gone to that that means uh, the emissions gone to zero doesn't make much of a sense because mm -hmm. we are again come to poor and very poor in fact in in one day in delhi during this lockdown period which was i if i remember very well i think around 15th of uh, 15th 16th of april and mm -hmm. 5th and 6th of april it has gone to poor and very poor level mm -hmm. that time i have very clearly told that we have predicted 5 days in advance that mm -hmm. this summer the only thing which is happening is that dust storm originates correct. which is a natural thing correct which comes from the rajasthan and then afghanistan pakistan that border area which is more of a desert dust get lifted and it becomes more intense as the temperature increases 
mm-hmm. and sometime the dust multiple dust storm right from the gulf they all the way come tra- travel and then becomes the peak mm-hmm. so this uh, was we have very clearly predicted 5 days in advance that this go- peak is going to come don't mistaken it with the emissions uh, some people are violating uh, the lockdown uh, mm-hmm. lo- lockdown measures <clears throat> but it is because of dust storm which is coming but one thing i would like to mention here that the kind of a severe dust storm and severe air quality which we were witnessing due to the dust storm mm-hmm. has significantly reduced this time okay. even the kind of a severe dust storm which we used to see in the gulf countries uh, that is not that severe at that time is it something to do with the global lockdown which most of the countries have done it this is something very interesting problem one has to worked out number 1 another thing which is again very important that in between there were some spikes even otherwise also without right. the storms also and uh, after certain level the pollution level has gone little 10 to 20% higher than whatever right. the baseline right. we got it right. so people say that if baseline is you are telling this uh, but now for last these many days during lockdown it has come to 60 70 microgram per meter cube pm10 so baseline should be that mm-hmm. no no why because when nobody is in a this all depend there is one parameter what we call is a land use land cover change mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so in delhi there are greenery there are water bodies there are barren land there is a green land there are uh, there are residential land there are roads kacha road pakka roads mm-hmm. when there are no vehicles no people no activity those barren lands are barren lands so mm-hmm. when the final fast winds comes it gets more time to get lifted okay it gets suspended okay. but momentarily okay and that is one of the reasons that uh, some spikes you saw because of the increase in natural dust uh, due to no activities on the roads so i thought that these two things i will add up to that no 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 very interesting findings and and i'm sure it will deepen our understanding of what is the natural level of pollution and what is the human contribution to that and what should be the optimum level we should have for permitting economic activity which does not harm human beings exactly Uh, always such a pleasure talking to you dr bay thank you very much yes thank you very much thank you very much